Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome to another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI mm-hmm. and uh, coming to you from the Melden Law Gator Studios. And of course, mm-hmm. all segments with Coach Spurrier are sponsored by Melden Law as well. We got Coach on a little bit earlier than normal today and gr- glad to have him. We won't have him next Monday, but you'll be here next Friday, the way I understand it. That's right? correct. <laughs> uh, this weekend, uh, Jerry and I are flying out to San Jose, California to watch the 49ers play. They uh, have an alumni reunion weekend, and this is the weekend. Uh, so it worked out timing-wise uh, yep. very well. So looking forward to seeing some old teammates and uh, uh, watching the 49ers play Kansas City. Uh, uh, 49ers would be pretty big, big underdogs in that game yeah. probably. Yeah, well, the Chiefs, that yeah, was a tough loss for them yesterday. But uh, mm-hmm. w- we may talk a little NFL, mm-hmm. but we we need to start off talking about Florida. And, um, I mean, you had always mm-hmm. had a real interesting relationship with your defensive coordinators. Mm-hmm. And awesome. you would go down and say, hey, guys, you know, can we get the ball back today? Yeah. Um, you would be losing your mind with this defense. Yeah. Not, not ever, ever – you couldn't get the ball back. Well, I'd, yeah, I'd be coaching defense. I'd, I'd be <laughs> over uh, I'd be over telling the defensive guys, we must try something different. Yes. Uh, you know, we turned around the whole season at Duke University uh, the year before I came here uh, in the Clemson game, and, and we couldn't get the other team off the field. They uh, First down after first down, couldn't force a punt. So we went to an eight-man front. Of course, teams are different now. That, uh, but we changed our entire defense the uh, – Fifth game of the season, and we won the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> now we we were still very good on offense, and you know set uh, ACC records there. But we tried something different. And uh, to me, if it, if it ain't working, as they say, you got to either get new guys or try something different. I think we got good players. I, they, I mean, we look strong and fast and run around, but we, we we're not making any plays on defense. Third downs are. Killing us. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And and so, it seems to be soft coverage on third downs. Third and eight, third yeah. and ten, you know, where they're they're backing off the guy and uh-huh. letting them letting them get the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see us just try something different. So maybe that's what they're talking about this week. Mm-hmm. Well in a bye week, I mean you uh, mm-hmm. you know, I know you had bye weeks and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how much you change things or how much you just want to get guys recuperated well no we didn't have changed much we took the bye week off a lot of guys went home watched their old high school play yep. strut around the sideline especially <laughs> if we were four and oh or five and oh or something like that and uh, of course i went to crescent beach every open date yep. uh, we would go over friday come back sunday afternoon something like that but uh anyway uh maybe we need this open date uh it's sad going into open date after a loss. It was always a lot fun, more yeah. fun after a win. So, uh, but anyway, maybe maybe the open date will help us, and uh, we can uh, get back playing like we did against Utah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. amazing. I was we, you and I were talking about it before the show mm-hmm. started. That Florida in its last fourteen games in the SEC is three and eleven. Three and eleven. I mean, ooh, that, ooh. I, it, I never thought mm-hmm. I'd see that day again. You know, I mean, I, I saw it back in the old days with yeah. You know Charlie Pell going 0-10-1 that mm-hmm. first year, um, yeah. but I, I just never thought it would get back to this point. Yeah, 11 losses. I think we were in our 10th year when I think we hit uh, <laughs> 11 losses. Maybe the 11th year, because uh, only one year did we lose three, and then it was two, and then of course Danny Warfel's guys, they only lost two conference games in four years. Yeah, Donnie Young and. Warfel and all those guys, they came in that 92 recruiting class. So it was actually number one in the country. And we were able to redshirt. Remember when, when yes. redshirting was yep. in vogue? Yeah, <laughs> Nobody anymore. redshirts yeah. anymore because they got to play and go to the pros right away, or they think they're going to. Uh, but or they get in the transfer portal if yep. they're going to redshirt. But I tell you what, all of our guys in 92 wanted to redshirt and uh, have four years together. And, uh, and those, that, those guys went 34-2 and two in uh, SEC games. You know, um, and I know you like talking about quarterback play because you play quarterback, obviously, and coach the position. Anthony Richardson had some spectacular plays, but he wasn't consistently good. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he his numbers, when you look at his percentages, still still way down. Um, and I, I don't know what, what, you know, yet he makes the first throw of the game was perfect oh. throw, as good you know, as you can make it. We've tried that play twice and hit it both times for touchdowns. 
I, I think if I was Billy, I'd call it again. <laughs> uh, we're two for two on touchdowns, but a lot of times, you know, that's one you want to chunk it down there early in the game, and then sometimes you forget about it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I mean, the worst thing can happen is a 60-yard interception or incomplete, and that, that doesn't hurt. So, yeah, I'm a big believer the more opportunities you can chunk it uh, 50 or 60 yards, uh, a lot of good things, especially in pro football. Yeah. Pro ball, they – interference you get it right there right there yeah. so anyway but uh yeah i, I hope we use that play a lot more uh, through the rest of the season you and i will also we're also talking about the uh, penalty that was called on, on jervon dexter which when I, I when it happened i obviously didn't see it but mm-hmm. when they showed the replay i went oh that's a penalty i'm sorry mm-hmm. it, and a lot of people are complaining about it but Look, I, I don't disagree that it's it's a football play, but it's against the rules. Mm-hmm. It's the way it is. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it wasn't a penalty in 1996 when uh, those guys hit Danny Warfel no, well it wasn't. after no, he it threw wasn't. the ball. Well, not every team did, just one in particular. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you cannot bury the player now. And we wrapped him up and took him straight into the ground, and uh, their player bounced up. He didn't get injured on the play. Uh, but you've got to uh, – if he just gave him a big shove, I think he'd been all right. But you can't wrap him up and bury him into the turf. Uh, of course, the NFL now, you can't even sling him around and tackle him. No. Uh, but that, that, you can't it, even touch him hardly. Yeah, that's uh, they they got to change that in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, but it's still a rule. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a rule in college. You can't you can't mm-hmm. put your weight yeah, on the guy as you're driving him to the ground. It's mm-hmm. just it's unfortunate it's a rule, yeah. but it's a rule. Um, but obviously, this is going to be you know. This is a Gator Nation that is in a in a quandary right now because they they think they like Billy Napier and they love mm-hmm. what he's doing with recruiting, but mm-hmm. they're kind of like, but he's four and three, you know, and and that's that's an expensive mm-hmm. four and three right now. Yeah, conference games are uh, what it's all about, uh, pretty much. Although the Utah win was certainly big. Oh yeah, uh, they yeah. were top ten team, and they they may come back in top ten yeah. after beating Southern Cal. Uh, but we really, really uh, had a lot of good fortune in that game, as you know, Pat. And uh, uh, But, uh, yeah, our defense on third downs has really been uh, – I think we're ranked 125. Out no, of, it's, uh, it's gone down. They're last in the, in the college football. They're 131st right oh, now. Oh, we're last now. I yeah. didn't realize that. No, so what, dead uh, ass last, as you like mm-hmm. to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, speaking about the teams we had, our defensive guys, we'd force 8, 10 – 11, uh, I think the Georgia game in 90, they punted 12 times. And Auburn punted like 11 or so. I mean, it really? was three and out, three and out, three and out. So it made it uh, – uh, Shane and those guys, I mean, when they sat on the bench, I said, get ready because four plays later, we're yeah, in. Yeah. And uh, that's usually the way it was back then. I'll give you another stat that is not – it tells a story. Florida this year, this year, in seven yeah. games, has forced 18 punts. 18. Okay. That's 2.7 a game. That's not a lot of punts. You just mentioned mm-hmm. Auburn punted 10 times. Georgia punted 11 times a year. Mm-hmm. That was yours. Mm-hmm. They're, not, they're not stopping. They're, they're not getting off the field. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it's, it's driving Gator fans crazy, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time of possession, uh, we've been losing that. Of course, we, we scored quickly the first drive, two plays, and then they had it about a seven or eight-minute drive, it seems like. So, uh, yeah, we got to, we got to play better defense, and maybe this open date will turn things around and, you know, do something different, and let's turn this uh, into a winning season. I'll tell you right now, we got a lot of tough opponents coming. Yeah. So we need to turn it around. Well, mm-hmm. they're going to have to beat Vandy and one other team that's, you know, a mm-hmm. team that – they're all winnable games. Mm-hmm. I mean, A&M's a winnable game. Um, FSU's certainly a winnable game. Uh South Carolina's a winnable game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they've got to win at least one of those and Vanderbilt just to get bowl eligible. And I think it's important mm-hmm. that they get bowl eligible. You, sometimes I don't really care that much, but this mm-hmm. year they really got to get bowl eligible. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th- things can change. Uh, Mississippi State, Kentucky, did you watch that game? I did watch the whole game, well, yeah. Uh, I was talking to one of the Mississippi State coaches, and I said, the Kentucky team that played South Carolina – that wasn't the same one you guys played. No, no. Kentucky was ready to play, and they ran the ball down uh, Mississippi State's throat just about. Got in the eye formation, handed to that Rodriguez. He, mm-hmm. he gained 197, I think. And uh, and they thoroughly beat Mississippi State. 
Uh, but the week before, they looked sad against South Carolina. So uh, the moral of the story is every week teams can be different. They can really have it or they can go bad. And uh, hopefully we can start really having it, as they say. Well, that's always been one of the things that I believe in, and that every game's its own game. Mm-hmm. That even right. though, even mm-hmm. though LSU didn't look good last week, you know, and Florida won last week, mm-hmm. didn't have anything to do with this week. Exactly you know, right. It, it changes, but mm-hmm. you mentioned, um, you know, Kentucky got their quarterback back, but he wasn't the difference in the game. He had nothing to do no, with he it, really. Didn't, he didn't do much at all except throw a pick six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Mississippi State, the other kid got I him back in the game. Down. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a line of scrimmage game. Kentucky yeah. controlled the line of scrimmage both ways. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I need to ask you about the uh, the Tennessee um, Alabama game, mm-hmm. which I, I mean, I, I it was an unbelievable game. Unbelievable, uh, yeah. I, 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 you know, obviously the pass interference there late in the game when it looked like, you know, I'm thinking to myself, Alabama's won the game, mm-hmm. and the game's over, and then all of a sudden it comes back, and then obviously trying the field goal didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the second time he's tried a long field goal, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would have called a couple of running plays down there just to get the ball closer instead of trying to throw three times. And Alabama. Throw, yeah, and, and throwing three incompletions. Well, that's true, too. The uh, That's the same kid that made it against Texas, so. Yep. And, yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Alabama, you know, heck, they could have three losses right now. Texas and, and even the A&M game they could have lost. Uh, I mean, they're on the two-yard yeah. line with a chance to win yeah. the game. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not uh, as dominant as maybe everybody thinks they are supposed to be. And uh, their defense, uh, you know, at times looks pretty good. But Tennessee, shoot, they know what they're doing, uh, throwing the ball around. And they got some really good players on offense. That receiver, uh, Hyatt, they caught five touchdowns. Yeah. Oh, he's uh, he's big time. So uh, they're going to be tough. Tennessee's going to be tough. And, and their defense plays well enough. And they're not great, but they play well enough to uh, make a few stops here and there. You could have a, a, mm-hmm. a Tennessee Ole Miss SEC championship game. easily, yeah, yeah, easily. Ole Miss really looked good. Uh, I heard Lane Kiffin; he was bragging that had three running backs gained over 100 they yards, and they ran for 400 and something against Auburn. So, uh, yeah, Ole Miss is really strong. They they got a chance to yeah, go eight and uh, the next game. It mm-hmm. says a lot about really successful coaches that they mm-hmm. are able to adapt. And mm-hmm. I mean, I know how yep. you did in '97 mm-hmm. with Fred Taylor in that Penn State game. You said, "Look, where quarterbacks aren't getting it done, we're just going to yep. pound him." Did you go into that game with that mindset, or did I it would, kind of develop? Uh, yeah, Penn State was not very good against the run, and yeah. we knew that. And uh, Fred Taylor, of course, was ready to go. I think he carried 43 times that day. Yeah, and, 43 uh, or 47, one or the yeah, other. Noah, right? Yeah, Noah and Doug were still rotating, so right. we did it to FSU game and that game. But they were mostly just going in there handing off uh, <laughs> to Fred T. And our defense held them to six points. Right. So we didn't really They have were to. missing their best yeah. receiver, I think, was yeah. out for that game. Yeah. vicious, mm-hmm. I think it was. was. Yeah, he got suspended. And one of their running backs, yeah. Ingram, or I, I forget his e- name. Curtis Enos. Maybe? Enos, that's, yeah. that's who it was. Yeah. yeah, they had two of their top players were out. I don't time. know how I can remember stuff like that, yeah. but I can't remember birthdays, you know. But for some reason, yeah. I remember yeah. stuff Jerevicious like that. vicious and e- Enos, yeah, that was his name. In uh-huh. fact, I was I was thinking about this when Hyatt scored his four touchdown. He was he was going like this, and I was like, the last time I saw somebody do that was Ike Hilliard against Tennessee. When he scored four against them. Oh, and really? on the fourth one, as he scored, he was going like this. And I'm like, yeah, that is four for you. I was guess. that 95 game? I 95 guess. game, oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, he, he had a field day that day. That's true. And they were yeah. covering him with strong safeties and linebackers. Linebackers. <laughs> well, we, we moved him in and empty. If you move him right where a tight end is, and, and, and if, they, if they play their normal defense, uh, then it's a, a middle linebacker that was trying to cover him a couple of times. I yeah. Know. So anyway, that's uh, yeah, yeah. All right, we have to get to our Campus mm-hmm. USA. Not only have to get, we love to get to our Campus USA mm-hmm. uh, play of the week, and here it is. And you remember this play, oh, my Coach? This this will go on the highlight reels. Yep. For the Gators. All right, there's one, two. That guy didn't three, want to tackle. He four. didn't want to tackle. That guy just swung at him. He didn't even he didn't even try to tackle him. He tried to punch the ball out, yep. which is a dumb move there. Yeah, that did look funny. That uh, they they allow spiking now, you know. Well, they allow they everything. Allow that. You're they allowed like to so. do anything now. I mean, you're not supposed yeah. to be able to jump like he did. The the, the famous Terry well, think, Jackson yeah. would have been a penalty now. 
But now yeah. I don't think it will. It's like this yeah. year they've decided we're not going to call uh-huh. anything. Because you remember. As uh, long as it's consistent. Yeah, the it, Tennessee guy yeah, so. did the gator chomp in the throat slash. And he didn't get in the. Oh, he did? Referee's oh, looking right that. at him at the, uh, mm-hmm. when they beat Florida. Uh, but apparently they're not going to call anything right. this year, which is fine. I hope they've told the players you can do whatever you want because that's what they're allowing. They're allowing it. Yeah, and that's fine. I don't, do that. yeah. I don't have a problem. It's just that I, I, I thought I knew the rules, and they, the rules seem to keep changing for me. Mm-hmm. Without uh, announcing them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, by the way. They should let us know those kind of things. All right, what else do you have for us today? Oh, just uh, uh, talking about uh, – uh, we've pretty much covered it. Uh, the uh, the voting came out, and uh, well, they, they got Ohio State up there now. Or they got no, they, they got Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Ohio State, yeah. Tennessee. Yeah, I can make an argument for Tennessee. Being I would number too. One. I yeah. would too. And the argument they said they should not vote until maybe the fourth or fifth week of the season. And then you got a chance to see what everybody did. Uh, but Tennessee didn't even start in the top twenty-five, no. so that's why they're only three now. If they started. You know, seven or eight. Uh, well, they'd probably obviously be number one because they have beaten four ranked teams. Well, the interesting thing though is it really only matters what the committee say, and the committee may Let have them at number one. And when they when they final, I yeah. think they meet mm-hmm. next week. Is well, that there's the first yeah, one? there's a lot of ball to be yeah. played, and uh, uh, a lot of good teams. Heck, TCU still undefeated. Michigan, they ran right through Penn State. Yeah, that was uh, that's not good yeah. for James Franklin that they. Uh, he just has a knack for not winning those kind of games. Yeah. They, they, Michigan, they look big and strong. They, they do look awfully good. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of ball left, as they say. So we'll, we'll see who can finish the second half of the season uh, strongly. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting down the stretch. Uh-huh. Um, although, you know, it's going to be kind of not this necessarily this weekend, mm-hmm. but there's going to be a lot of big games mm-hmm. coming on. You know, it's funny because game day is going to have their pick of where to go. Usually, sometimes you have they have to find a place to go, but they're going to have their pick of places oh, yeah. to go because there's going to be so mm-hmm. many great games down the stretch. There yeah, sure are. So college football, all that transfer portal and NIL has not hurt college football. If anything, yeah. it's made it uh, even I think more competitive because so many teams that used to not be very good, they've gone out and got some ball players right. from other places and coaching the heck out of them. And uh, I, I, almost anybody can win, seems like. Almost anybody. Well, that's the other thing is you also have the super seniors uh, to uh-huh. add in there because they're Another still, a, you know, Hendon Hooker is 24, 24. years old. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he's going to be 25 before the season's over. He yeah. may be 45. Yeah, I think he's got to be the leading Heisman candidate. They start talking about that all the time. Uh, yeah, when do you – because yeah. you get a vote and I get a vote. When do you start um, – Kind of thinking about it. I, I usually wait till the end oh, of October. Yeah, yeah. I, I wait till everybody's played, and uh, hopefully Kyle Trask or somebody likes that it's in there, so I can vote for him. But uh, yeah, Anthony. After the first game, now we had Anthony yeah, up there. Yeah, he was there. We had yeah. him up there. Those little touch passes. Sometimes he struggles with, you know, mm-hmm. throwing them a little too hard or whatever. Uh, but he he can make all the plays. Uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of wish we had some more design runs like that. 80 yarder he, he just had because uh, I think he could break, break one or two a game maybe. Well, you you know get your best athlete in space. That's yeah. kind of the what you want to do. And that uh, ETN's a heck of a player. He is Montreal. There, our, our our yards per average has got to be way up there. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. It. Uh, I mean those running backs. But are we're good. behind. We we get behind too much, so oh, we no. can't just Got concentrate cool. on the run. We have to try to mix it up, runs and passes. Uh, but we've we've not thrown for a ton of yards passing. Yeah, it's hard to it's Except hard to game, yeah. yeah stay mm-hmm. patient with yeah. the run yeah. because especially when mm-hmm. you're down forty two twenty one and the other know. team scoring almost every time so you you got to try to keep up but yeah uh, you got a lot of football left for the Gators so hopefully we can come back and have a winning record win a bowl game and uh, hit that portal or hit the recruiting trails and exactly. uh, just get a little bit bigger stronger and faster. Well, their their class is going to be a good class. Mm-hmm. Although they had a decommitment, which was weird, and and Creed Whittemore, who's from Gainesville, and he ends up committing to Mississippi State that day. He he decommitted and then went committed to Mississippi State, and Steve Spurrier Jr. Oh, so he did should he? go play wide receiver out there. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was kind of weird. When did that happen? I didn't. Read it happened about Sunday. That. Yeah, Sunday. All of a sudden, he oh. posted he's decommitting, and then he posts. That he's going to Mississippi State. He wants to get some balls coming at him, huh? Well, and his brother's not getting a lot of balls on his, his brother's way. Maybe, not getting maybe much that's, at all. Yeah. that's a reason why. Maybe they'll mm-hmm. go there too. 
Yeah, you never know. know. I did not know that. Yeah, learning stuff here today. Well, that's yeah. good. That's what I'm here for. So. Yeah. To do that. All right. All right, Coach, we'll let you go, and right. uh, we appreciate your time. We'll be back right. with more of another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. And, of course, mm -hmm. all of Coach Spurrier's appearances are brought to you by Meldon Law. We'll be Hello. back with the hand law starting lineup when we return. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brippo, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call-ahead carry-out, quick service. Uh, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer? and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town. Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant, and you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day, from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities just look at gas streaming services and heck even chicken wings well there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life and the fine folks at titan mri agree with costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital you'll not only save money you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience so when you need an mri call titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families now offering cat scans Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727-372-6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of mem other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150 and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? 
Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? All right, and welcome back to another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. We like to switch things up every once in a while. Sometimes Coach gets in there early and we go, hey, let's go ahead and do his segment. And we always love having him on. Great stuff from him, as always. Um, don't forget, Scott Fr- Strickland is on Friday. I am going to ask him about a lot of things, including the Florida-Georgia game. Uh, but also, um, we'll talk a little bit about the scheduling. Why Florida has six home games to start the season out of the first seven games, which maybe he can answer that question. So, Look forward to having him on. And then Monday will be Buck Ballou, uh to talk about f- the Florida-Georgia game. And we'll try not to talk very much, or if at all, about Lindsey Scott, okay? Um, and then uh, the following Friday, Coach Spur will be on. Uh, it, was, it was a good weekend in a lot of ways in that we had friends in and spent a lot of time. Karen had an awesome tailgate party. She had a blast. Um, and it was – but for me – I didn't go to the game. There's a reason I didn't go. I could go into detail about it, but I don't think it's any of your business. But uh, uh, I just didn't want to go uh, for a lot of reasons. And um, I watched 12 hours of football, and including the USC-Utah game at the very end of that. Uh, just watched so much football. It was unbelievable theater, as it always is, college football. It's just incredible. It's the best. It is, and I, you know, I've said this before. I'm not going to let a bad football team at Florida um, ruin my college football season because I live for it. It's what I live for, uh, college football season. All right, it is time for our hand loss starting lineup, which we usually bring you at the beginning of the show. That's why it's called the starting lineup. But when we have Coach Spurrier on early, it is now the middle lineup. I guess can we say that? Uh, The middle lineup is presented by Hand Law, a Florida law firm which helps clients with government. You can learn more about Hand Law by visiting its website at www.hand.law. The firm is available for consultation in Jacksonville. We appreciate Chris Hand for being a longtime sponsor of this podcast. We we really appreciate a lot of people, and we'll talk about them in a little bit as well. Um, all right, let's start out number one. I can give you a hundred defensive uh, stats that are going to tell you how bad it's been. The one I mentioned to Coach Spurrier was one that I looked up. This I was laying in bed this morning. I went, you know what? Let me go look that up. 18 punts forced. The all-time record at Florida. Now, I know that the all-time record does not go back to the 20s or 30s, but the one they list the media guy, which is – they list every season going back to 1946. And back in the 40s, 30s, and 20s, people punted more than they ever did. So I'm sure that nobody forced fewer punts in um, this Florida defense. Um, but 43 is the all-time record for fewest punts forced. That was 1971. That was Doug Dickey's second team. Nobody wanted to play. He was making John Rees run the option. It was a it was a disaster of a season. They went four and seven. That was the last time they've been this bad. Eighteen punts forced. Eighteen punts forced. Third down defense is last, dead ass last, as I said, in the in all of college football. So I, I those are the two stats I'm gonna just focus on for right now. The I don't care how bad the players are, okay? I, don't, I mean, we, we talk about this all the time. Guys aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Guys maybe just aren't that good. And, and there is something to be said for the fact that the last three years, Florida's been bad on defense. Last three years. All these same guys playing in a lot of those games. So, you know, you kind of look at it and you go, Why, wh- what is going on here? Are these players as bad? So that's what I think what a lot of people have leaned on. But the coach has got to be – well, you know, you got to – you're the ones calling the plays. Um, you're the ones calling the defenses. I, I think their defense plays soft on third and long a lot. They don't want to get anybody behind them. And yet somehow they still get guys behind them. Um, you know, when they got uh, Corey Raymond from LSU, that was a big get for Florida. 
and everybody was going nuts about it. And that was like the the jewel of of um, Coach Napier's recruiting – or not recruiting class, but to get a guy that – for his coaching staff, that was a big get. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and, I'm again, he may be – he may be a great coach. But for some reason, he's not getting through to the secondary guys, and they're not playing well. Not only that, but um, this is a defense – that all right. So at halftime, they come out, and the first play that LSU runs is a fifty-yard run where Florida misses four point-blank tackles, right on the guy, missed the tackle. And I know the good the guy's a good player. I guess he's a good player. I didn't know he was a good player going into the game because he had one hundred and twenty-six total rushing yards. Last week against Tennessee, he went seven carries, 10 yards. Josh Williams. This game, he goes for 106. Ran hard? Yeah. Look, I, I've said this a million times, too, guys. You got to wrap up. And they missed 21 tackles in the game, according to uh, Pro Football Focus, which does all these analytics on it. 21 tackles they missed in a game, in game seven. Now, okay, so you say, well, these guys may be a little worn out. This is game seven. They haven't had a week off. Now they get a week off. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they're worn out. Maybe guys like Jervon Dexter are having to play too much. They seem to have a lot of energy to commit that penalty. And he made a good play on the play until he didn't let him go. Didn't You hit the guy and you kind of back off you, or you roll him, you pull him. You don't go drive them into the ground. You and again, you may not like the penalty, but it's a, it's a penalty. It is a penalty. I'm not saying it's a good call. I'm just saying it's a penalty. It is what what it is. Um, this defense is going to set records. We've we've never thought we'd see broken because a lot of them occurred during the COVID year. But these are bad. Pen, this is a bad situation. Um, let us go to number two on the hand loss starting lineup. Um, there were boos at halftime when Florida was down already, well, 35 21 at that point. Um, and LSU scored on its first seven touchdowns on its first seven possessions. It's one thing when you allow points to be scored in your first seven possessions, but touchdowns on seven straight possessions to start the game. Boos at halftime. So the honeymoon, is it over with Billy Napier? Look, I still think he knows what he's doing. I understand some things that he's doing. But he's got he's to figure out what's going wrong with the defense. Maybe it's too much for Patrick Toney. Maybe uh, there are guys on this staff that just – you know, they look, Florida doesn't have bad enough players that they're 131st in third down prevention. And I don't even, I didn't even look up where they are on defense. You, look, you don't even need my stats to know how bad they are on defense. The question is why? Is it coaching? Is it players? Is it the schedule, which is really difficult? I, I mean, I think it's all of those things and have combined to make them really bad. But they're bad. And fans are letting Napier hear it. They're fed up with it. This is not Florida football giving up 45 points to LSU. It wasn't Florida football when they did it in – well, I'm trying to remember what the score was last year. seems like it was like 45-42 in that game or something like that. I, I, I don't know why – that's a rare score. I can't remember. But anyway, it is what it is, and fans are getting upset. Look, Gator fans are exhausted. We talked about they were exhausted after last year dealing with Mike White, dealing with Dan Mullen, dealing with all the stuff that went on there. And they, they, they said, all right, we finally got a normal coach, but they're still upset, and I don't blame them. you got to be upset. If you're not upset about the way they're playing on defense, and you, everybody's got – everybody's dissected Anthony Richardson. He was the frog. My wife said I should start calling him fetal pig because even though I dissected a fetal pig when I was in high school, most people didn't. Call him the frog. He's being dissected. But now they're de they're trying to figure out why this defense stinks. And, look, you can have a million reasons. You can't blame Trey Dean for every play. They're just not good. Uh, number three, Billy Napier did take responsibility after the game. And I 
I did like what I heard from him that he they were going to be sick watching tape, but figure it out. Like I've heard this before from coaches where they get upset and they're saying like, you know, it's my bomb. I'm not doing a good job. I'd rather hear that than kind of the Dan Mullen approach, which was it's not my fault. Players aren't doing what they're supposed to do. You know, I'm I'm smart. It's the players that are dumb. That was basically what he was saying, although he never said it in those words. Or McIlwain's kind of the same way. Spurrier was not. Coach Spurrier was not that way. He was like, we got to coach him better. We're not doing a good job with it. You know, I, obviously our, our, our coaches need to do a better job, but we're not doing a very good job. So that was his – that was their philosophy. This is Napier's philosophy, and I, I agree with it that they've got to do a better job of coaching. Certainly on the defensive end, it's got to get much better. Um, because I went into that game thinking, I can't wait to see what they're going to do offensively because I'm curious. Are they going to try to run blah, blah, blah? And then, obviously, when LSU scoring on every drive, it changes the way you're doing things. But uh, So we'll see how that all goes. Certainly, as I mentioned earlier, Creed Whittemore decommitting and then committing to Mississippi State I think was not a trend. I think it was a single – situation where maybe he's not happy with what is going on with Trent um, and feels like I want to go somewhere where they're going to throw the ball around and um, you know give give receivers opportunities to make plays I don't know I don't know the I know the family a little bit I I've, I've spent a little bit of time with Trent I, I've spent a little time with Missy I've spent a little time with the dad at, at quarterback club meetings but I don't really know him that well so one day it'll, I'm sure it'll come out, but it's kind of, kind of curious. But it is what it is. All right, number four, um, the Tennessee Alabama game. When it was over, I said, I think I just watched the greatest game in the history of college football. And then I thought, you know, there are not a lot of games like that playoff game between Oklahoma and Georgia. Did get the result I wanted, but um, that was a great game. And there, there have been great games. There have been other great games just at the same level. It just felt like it was one of the greatest games ever to be played. I, I got to admit, I was rooting for Alabama. I kind of liked Saban. I didn't mind Tennessee getting no, shut down a notch, but instead they came back and Saban's got to learn not to try those late field goals. Uh, that's not working out for him very well. Uh, but the penalties were the amazing thing. This is an incredible stat. 15 penalties against Texas, 17 against Tennessee. That is what the heck is going on in Tuscaloosa? Um, by the way, um, Tennessee was fined a hundred thousand dollars for storm in the field, and the Gators can take some responsibility for that um, because the you, you the second fine is a hundred thousand. The first fine I think is fifty thousand, and that was in 06 when they stormed the court after they beat Florida in basketball. That was their first one. The second one was this one. You get a third one, I think it's 250000 But if you remember, Greg Sankey and I talked about this. Um, they got to put some more teeth into that because fining these people is not enough. They were celebrating the fine. They were celebrating that they were going to have to pay for new Gold Coast. They don't care. You know, the finances that are coming in are, you know, negate it. Um, but it's, it's still $100,000. Um all right, I, I've got something written down here. Oh, I this is what made that great game so good. I finally re re realized what it was. There was a – the game was either tied or one team took the lead on all eight possessions. I'm sorry, all uh, – yeah, all eight possessions in the second half. That's what made it one of the greatest games ever played, and it was. And I'm sure Tennessee fans will probably look at it as the greatest game in the history of the program. And I know there have been some great ones. I mean, beating Florida here in 01 certainly was. This was the greatest game, I think. Even the national championship game. Wasn't a great game. I mean, FSU was playing as backup quarterback. Finally, on number five on the hand-loss starting lineup, maybe I should back off the defense and just say, hey, this is what college football is now. College football, and I know there are some games where nobody can score the Kentucky – uh, Mississippi State game was amazing that they just couldn't do anything right uh, in that game. Um, offensively, it was 3-3 at the half. But And so there are games like that. Kentucky tends to muck them up a little bit. But on the same day, Alabama, which was number three in the country, gave up 52 points. USC, which was number seven in the country, gave up 43. 
Number eight, Oklahoma State gave up 43. Florida gave up 45. You know, it, it, maybe it's just where college football is because they've made all these rules to make it a, a more interesting game. I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's just that everybody's struggling with it or if I, all I can go is by the games that I watch every play of. And, of course, there were two of them, and one of them gave up 40 or 52, one of them gave up 49, one of them gave up 45, one of them gave up 35. Those are the – two games that I watch, so it is maybe just what college football is. All right, that's going to do it for our Hand Law starting lineup. We appreciate Hand Law for being part of it. Uh, We'll take a break. We'll come back. All our great fun things that we do, Hester and Kipke, three things. We'll get to the Adams Ribco to go Gator of the weekend, Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks, uh, Gainesville Quarterback Club games of the weekend, Pat Dooley story time. I'm also, if we have time, I'm going to get to my, in fact, I may just go ahead and lead with this coming back my what my top 10 would look like if i was still a voter now i was a voter for a long time but once i quit working at the paper that that ended still get a heisman vote though um and i can't tell you who i'm voting for though because if i do they'll take it away so i'm not voting yet all right but we'll get to all that and more when we return oh and we got yes nowhere maybe with robbie andrew uh, coming up too so we'll get to all that on the other side, after this break, on another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead carry out quick service, um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities just look at gas streaming services and heck even chicken wings well there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life and the fine folks at titan mri agree with costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital you'll not only save money you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience so when you need an mri call titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families now offering cat scans albert alberta i understand you were witnesses to a crash can you tell us about the accident When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board-certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727-372-6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. 
Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of men- other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150, and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter- Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast brought to you as always by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. It's a great pleasure as always to bring on Robbie Andrew for Yes, No Way or Maybe. That is brought to you, and he's on the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. It is brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak, street dining done right. And, of course, if you go in there, you can get free French fries with the order by mentioning another duly noted podcast. And Robbie's appearances are brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, as they always are, and we appreciate them. I was actually over at Ken Hesser's house Friday night, so had a good time over there. All right, Robbie, what was your weekend like? Firewood. Huh? What was your weekend like? A lot of football, Pat, and some driving. <laughs> well, I That was good. Be- well, I was saying earlier, I can't believe the Dodgers and Braves are, are out of it already, the two best teams in baseball. Baseball is dead to me. So Yeah, I know. Yeah. Believe me. I Now, the only, the only reason to, to even turn on a game would be to negative root the Yankees. But other than that, I don't – whoever wins, yeah. have at it. You know, but – Yeah, that's all that's left. The sad part is that when you when you lose – that game, like the Braves did on Saturday, it's the end of your championship. You know, that that is the Yeah, you're over. Yeah. yeah. You can't – even though you're not really defending, you still – you can't do it anyway. No, I didn't even watch the game Saturday. But, um, all right, yes, no way or maybe with Robbie Andrew. Number one, it'll be Tennessee and Ole Miss in the SEC championship game. Yes, no way or maybe, Robbie. Uh, a, a shaky maybe, Pat? I mean, you'd think that Alabama's going to beat Ole Miss, so that, they would have a head-to-head on them. Well, you so, yeah, would I think, must say a, but a shaky maybe. You would think, but I mean, with the way Alabama's defense played uh, Saturday, I don't. I mean, yeah. I think. I, I mean, and don't forget, Texas A&M was had one play from the two-yard line to beat them. Texas yeah. was beating him and had a real good chance to beat him. I don't think this is one of his better teams. I really don't. Yeah. But I, I don't know if Ole Miss has become a real run-oriented team, Pat. And I don't know if they have, are good enough in the passing game to do anything like Tennessee did the other day. So I, I think Alabama matches up good against Ole Miss. They've got them at home, I think, right? I think they do, yeah. Um, well, that brings me to number so two. shaky on, maybe they'll be in there. Yeah, number two on yes, nowhere, maybe. Alabama still makes the college football playoff after that loss Saturday. Maybe, Pat, but if they went out, yeah, they would because they'd beat uh, probably number one George in the conference championship game. So that would definitely put them back in the playoff. And I imagine George would be in the playoff too if they had just the one loss. So, yeah, I well, think, yeah, they're going to be in it. They're going to be in the playoff because I think yeah, they're going to win out. Here's the interesting thing. Let's say they went out, but they, they lose to Georgia 42 39 and they have two losses. I mean, they still could get in. If their two losses are by a field goal, um, you know, I mean, and, and their strength of schedule is really good. I think it's number six yeah. in the country. They could still get in. Yeah. What if, what if, Pat, what if Tennessee beats Georgia and then beats Alabama again in the championship game? What do you got then? Georgia, Tennessee both going to the playoff? Because that would knock Maybe. Alabama out. Yeah. Uh, you know, that Georgia Tennessee game could be uh, for seeding. You know, I'm in the in the yeah, college football. 
Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm not looking forward to the Florida Georgia game though. No. Well, that brings me to number three, Ravi, and that yeah. is you at your advanced age could play defense for Florida right now. Could I? Yes, you. No way. <laughs> no, I could I, line up right, maybe. I could line up right, maybe do what they tell me to do. You could actually cover I, guys. I wouldn't be any good at it. I don't know, Robbie. I watch those I'd be guys. One, one play and done. But, Pat, you know, I was thinking today when I was walking, Pat, that this may be the worst defense that I can ever remember Florida having. I mean, even in 79, the 0 10 and one year, they were competitive on defense. You know, made stops and got the ball back for the offense, which was awful. But this may be the worst defense I've ever seen for Florida. Well, in the first part of the show, I did I, I threw a bunch of stats out there, and statistically, it is on a historic pace. Let's just put it that way. I mean, the worst year Florida ever had defensively was the COVID year, and nobody played defense that year. It was kind of well, yeah, that was that was a. But a lot of these same guys were on that defense, and they maybe just aren't very good. Um, and, but at the same time, you know, like I, I said earlier, the coaching, you know, when you are on pace to break all the defensive bad records in the history of the program, <laughs> that's not yeah. a good on your resume, is it? No, I've never seen a third down defense as bad as this one, where, you know, the other team's going to get somebody wide open and you've got defensive backs playing 10 yards off the ball, 15 yards off the ball. And it's unbelievable. I, you know, you put Florida – if Florida had somebody in a third and 50, I wouldn't bet on them getting a stop. I, I tweeted this I out. Really on, yeah, I tweeted this out on Saturday during the game. I said, you know, LSU could take a knee on first and second down. And they probably should because they're not very good on first and second. But they know on no. third down they can get a guy open. So oh, yeah. why, not, why even snap the ball on first and second yeah. down? <laughs> why waste your time? Just take five-yard third penalty. down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then just go third for it. down and go. It's sad, really sad. I mean, it I knew really this is. Te- it is bad. I knew this team was not going to be a great team this year, but I didn't know they would be like this. Uh, I didn't know they'd be this bad on defense. Uh, yeah, I don't and, think anyone saw the, that coming. Yeah, and I thought the secondary would be good, Pat, but the secondary has not done anything. They God, they can't cover. They can't. Nope. They're they're blowing assignments. They can't cover when they play zone defense. There are huge holes in it. It's unbelievable. Absolutely. It's it's not good. All right, Robbie, that's it for yes, no way or maybe. And we as always we appreciate it. We will uh Thanks, we Pat. Will talk I to you next it. Monday. Okay, right. we'll see it. Robbie Andrew. BFF, as he is for me. Um with yes, no way, or maybe. All right, it is time, and we're running a little late as always. Uh, I talk too much. Uh, for our Hesser and Kipke three things, and I, I w- I, Ken had a little party Friday night, and uh, I went over there, and we got to, I finally got to meet him, he and his wife, um, Jenny. Um, and it was great, although he was celebrating the Phillies, and that did bother me a little bit. But, no, we had a, we had a blast. It was good to talk to him, and we had a lot of conversations. And uh, appreciate him being a sponsor, and appreciate everything he does for the podcast. And and uh, we we text so much; it's really funny. All right, number one. Uh, all right, I'll talk about it. The Braves are done. They, the Braves decided not to pitch in the postseason for some reason. It's almost a relief. Look, it it, it was a really great season, uh, but it was what it was. And the Dodgers are out, which is amazing. The Braves worried about the wrong team winning the East. They they should have been worried about the um, Phillies instead of the Mets. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, Three Things is brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a law firm based in Hale Plantation specializing in employment, workers' comp, and family law. Visit their website at www.hklawfl.com or call Ken and Jennifer at 352 339 in fact, there were a couple, several people there that had been represented by Ken and, and Jennifer and were very happy with it. So I can I can fully endorse them. Um, number, oh, by the way, um, Jason's a little nervous about tonight. Yankees, Guardians to advance. All right. Uh, number two, um, I watched, I, I'm kind of a Chiefs fan. I, I really like Pat, Mahom- Pat Mahomes. I, I really like. 
Mahomes. Pat Mahomes was his dad. Um, I, I just really like him as a player. I like Andy Reid, so I kind of root for them. But so if I'm a Chiefs fan and a Braves fan, I got to listen to that War Chant all the time, and I hate the War Chant. It's it. I, I think it's me personally. I think it's racist, but it, that's my opinion. But it d- doesn't mean it's true. But the bottom line is, I don't. I hate it. I don't want to hear it anymore. So I've got to turn the sound off on all their games. So the Braves games, I've turned the sound off. Chiefs games, I've turned. Off. So I got I got two TVs going with no sound on. Maybe I need to change teams. I got too many war chants going on. And finally, on the Hesser and Kipke, three things. Number three, the Titans have a deal in place to build a $2.2 billion dome stadium right next to the one they have now. They're not to the east of it anyway. And my first question was, what is what is going on with Vanderbilt? Why can't they do what they're doing? Why can't they do that? They've got the kind that kind. They don't have two point two billion, but they've got money coming in from the SEC. Do something with that stadium. But that's all I could think about. I don't care what Titan Stadium. I've only, I've never been there. Anyway, that is Esser and Kipke three things. Let us go to our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the weekend. I did make my Saturday visit there, and enjoyed it very much, and always do. We love Adams Ribco. To go and at the regular Adams Rip Code there, we're there on 13th Street. Uh, I'm going with Kyir Elam as the Gator of the weekend. Um, had a big interception early in that game, uh, and it's, it was his second pick in his last two games, but it was in the end zone. And he made a great play on it, high point of the ball. It made me think, I wish you were still at Florida, Kyir, because nobody in the secondary seems to be able to do much. Um, and I, I, like, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blast the defense again, but I'm just gonna say Kyrie Elam was a really good player at Florida and is is doing really well in the NFL. And so he is our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the Weekend. Congratulations, Kyrie. I'm sure that you're excited about that. Um let us get to our Leonardo's and Mill Hopper quick picks. Of course, we pulled the winner last week on Friday. Sean Belgrade won again the second straight time. I know he's happy about that. I he sent me an email. I'm about to send him a copy of my book, and a $25 gift certificate, gift certificate at Leonardo's. Uh, New Orleans at Arizona. That's the Thursday night game. I, w- I was waiting for the over-under to come out, but it hadn't come out when I wrote this down. But it, uh, Arizona's giving two and a half. New Orleans at Arizona, if you want to. That's the first qualifier, and we'll see how everybody does, and we'll get as many people in there. Um, <laughs> I just got a text from my wife. I, I'll, I'll talk about that later, uh, but it's it's funny. All right, so that is our Leonardo's at Mill Hopper quick picks. I was going to do a quick top ten, but I don't need to. I would have Ohio State one, Georgia two, Tennessee three. Tennessee did get 15 first place votes. I, I think you can make an argument for Tennessee being number one right now. Doesn't really matter, but it it is what it is. The Gainesville Quarterback Club games of the week tomorrow. No meeting. They are having their golf tournament tomorrow, so that'll be a lot of fun and. Uh, Monday night tonight, Denver at the L.A. Chargers at 8.15, 7.30. Um, or I'm sorry, 8.15. Uh, it's on, uh, what is it on, ESPN, right? Yeah. And then Wednesday you have a college football game. It, this might not be a bad game. Georgia State at Appy State, 7.30 on ESPN2. Thursday, uh, Virginia, Georgia Tech. I don't know that I really want to watch that game. 7.30 on ESPN, but it is what it is. And there's also Troy at South Alabama, which I know I don't want to watch, 7.30 ESPNU. Uh, Don't forget baseball, obviously, tonight. I'm sorry, tomorrow. Philly at San Diego. It's on FS1. It is at 8.03. Then they play at 4.35 on Wednesday. And then uh, Wednesday there will also be a night game with whoever wins tonight against the the, uh, Astros. Volleyball is playing Wednesday. Georgia here. So go out there and support Mary Wise is a great team. They just swept Mississippi State over the weekend on Friday and Saturday. Uh, soccer is playing Thursday. If you don't want to support them, I understand. They're 2-13, and 13, I think it is, or 2-11, and 11, something like that. But they are playing Vanderbilt here at 6 o'clock. So, you know, want to support them? Support them. You should. All right. So that is our Gainesville Quarterback Club Games of the Week. We appreciate uh, the Gainesville Quarterback Club. 
All right, it is time for Pat Dooley's story time. And uh, I had this down to use as last Friday's, but I ended up going with something else after the concert I went to. Ended up talking about the amphitheater. But I'm going to talk about this, and I hope he doesn't get mad about this, but it's, it's reality. It's what happened. But the LSU game made me think about it. In 2001, I guess it would have been. Yeah. So 2001, I'm pretty sure it was 2001. We're at the same hotel with the team as we always were, and uh, we're, we're down in the uh, hotel bar just having a couple of beers with Jeremy Foley, which we always did. And uh, we, for some reason, we got to him. We got to him where he, we said, hey, who would be, if Spurrier left, who would be on your list? And he told us. And we were able to use that after Spurrier left that year, which was, he said, he said, Stoops. I would go after Stoops. I would go after Mike Shanahan. I would go after Ron Zook. And we all went, well, we get the first two. We don't get the third one. But the the good thing was when it got done, and this is why I was always great to stay with the team, and I told that story earlier about it, um, that you could have these kind of conversations. Well, of course, when Spurrier leaves, we're like, who are the candidates? Well, here's who we think all the candidates will be. We looked really smart. Stoops. Shanahan and Zook, and people were like, Zook? And, of course, Zook ended up being the coach. So we were right about that. Um, by the way, I did want to mention that on the uh, Pat Dooley Story Time, which is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics, we appreciate their sponsorship. I talk about them, and I talk about Hillsborough County. They're not in Hill- Hillsborough County. They're in Pinellas and some other areas. But, you know, that people have come up. And, and I, I love that people listen to the story time and listen to the podcast and, and mention it to them. You're, you're keeping me alive with them because I'm sure there's times when they wonder if if anybody's listening. But we know there are a lot of people listening. And uh, obviously, Hillsborough County, I will not mention again. Don't let me, if I do that, throw something at me, okay? Uh, but we appreciate the great people at uh, – East Lake Pediatrics for being a part of this. All of our great sponsors and, of course, our great producers, Jason and Tammy, who do such a great job. Coach Spurrier for being on here every Monday. He'll be on next Friday as well. Uh, I'm losing my voice. Uh, Robbie Andrew for being on on Mondays. Don't forget, Friday, Scott Strickland will join us, and that'll do it. For another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios, I am Pat Dooley, and I am deep, I am way back, and I am out of here.